Uh, well, uh, you know, I think by most measures, the Millennium Development Goals were a success, and it's important. We've had some real successes with it. Now, not every target is going to be met, but I think generally a success, and the biggest anti-poverty drive I think the world has probably ever seen, uh, you know, we should be commending that. So the next logical conclusion is, well, let's, 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 let's step up and let's see how we can ramp up those efforts. And the Sustainable Development Goals are taking a very different course of action to Millennium Development Goals in terms of how they were conceived. Uh, Millennium Development Goals were seen as a little bit uh, in a room, uh, private discussions uh, between political elites, whereas the development of the Sustainable Development Goals is very much a uh, uh, participative project. Uh, getting NGOs, civil society, governments, even sub-state uh, governments uh, being involved in the conversation. And Scotland has huge amounts of expertise to contribute towards that. But I suppose the biggest impact we can have is being very targeted, very focused on where our expertise are. So on areas such as renewable energy, clean energy, where Scotland leads the way, uh, how can we use that in, in the developing world to create energy, sustain, sustainable energy uh, solutions. Uh, academia is another strength of ours uh, as well. And uh, our relationship with Malawi and how that is bottom up as well as top down, perhaps those are, are three areas that we can look to, to, to contribute. I think it's a great point that was made in the meeting that, that we had today. Uh, you know, it's important for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, uh, people at home, unless you have the public supporting what you're doing, the political leadership and political will is very rarely going to be there. Politicians, by their nature, don't like to go against their public and their electorate. Uh, so you have to uh, get, uh, you have to internalise some of those policies as well, and you have to communicate them internally uh, as well, so that people can understand them, see the value of them, and support the work that you hope to do externally. And there's also something about values base, and that was spoken about in the meeting today. If you believe that people in the developing world should have the best access to health care and we should be tackling challenges of maternal health and illiteracy, well, you have to be doing that internally as well. You have to be doing that domestically at home too. So there's a challenge for domestic governments to make sure they're doing that as well, because if you're not, quite rightly, people will be asking why are you sending money to XYZ country while well, we're having issues of illiteracy or maternal care, uh, maternal health care here in, in Scotland or wherever it may be. So uh, it's, it's important for a couple of reasons and I think maybe it's something we've, uh, and governments uh, across Europe have probably glossed over and not given enough attention to, but it's certainly a, a key theme in the Sustainable Development Goals agenda and the post-MDG agenda. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, you know, there's a couple of uh, reasons, uh, a couple of ways we can do that. Uh, one is, uh, being a small country, I think, gives you an advantage in this respect. Being a small country, you can take a little bit more risks. That for a bigger country, a larger country, perhaps a country that ha has other geopolitical interests, it's very difficult to do that. Uh, being a country of our size, actually, uh, we can be a little bit more uh, risky. We can try innovative, creative um, solutions and, and projects. And so you know what? If it doesn't work, learn from that failure, bring it back. And it's not caused... Uh, damage or, or, or harm uh, in that respect. So, you know, we're, we're, we're lucky, we're inherently uh, lucky in that respect that we have um, uh, the demographic that we do. Uh, the second point is very much the one that you raise. Uh, you know, we're world renowned for our research. So how do we apply that research, that academia, that intelligence, that innovation to solutions before we actually put them out on the ground and before they're, you know, pr pragmatically realised and, and practised and projects across the world so you know we can use the academia but the third thing is just a mindset as well uh, it is about understanding that no matter how good your research is no matter how uh, creative or innovative you are you're going to make mistakes and having the mentality to say well we're going to accept that and we're not going to try to dig ourselves into a deeper hole uh, we're going to come back to the drawing board and start again and just understanding that you probably are at some point going to make a mistake and our international development work is very young in Scotland it's since 2005, or less than 10 years old. Uh, if Scotland, of course, uh, votes for, for, for yes in the referendum, then we'll be even, even younger in terms of having the full remit of that power. So understanding the stage that we're at, that probably mistakes will be made down the line, uh, but understanding that that shouldn't hamper our confidence in doing the work that we're doing. Hmm. 
You know, I mean, uh, I, I think the same conversations happen in Scotland. Uh, people uh, see that uh, big business or private sector is fundamental to the solution. Uh, some people see them as fundamental to the problem. And so people were still having that conversation in Scotland. Uh, in regards to the government, uh, we've started to dip our toe in the water. Uh, we have, for example, uh, in our Climate Justice Fund, as part of the climate justice work we do, uh, we have the 2020 Group, which is a group of businesses, uh, largely from the financial sector, so banks, uh, financial services, but also small and medium-sized enterprises uh, coming together to see how they can look at their supply chains, how they can look at their, um, their financial expertise, how they can look at their business acumen, uh, their trade, their investment. How can they look at all the holistic f um, faculties of their of their of their business and uh, help to mitigate the effects of climate change and work with the government, but at the same time quite autonomously, uh, and it's proving a big success. I think as long as you don't exclude NGOs and civil society from the conversation, because they will provide a very important sense check. You know, if you're stepping the and uh, you know if we're stepping over the line into practices that are harmful. It will be the NGOs and the civil society that will be the first sense check and say, look, you need to pull back from this. And so as long as they're not excluded from the conversation, I think it's something that government should certainly explore because in my perspective, uh, the private sector is as much part of the solution as anybody else. Yeah, well, I think it's a great question. And I'm very pleased that although this national debate about Scottish independence is happening, at home and is quite domestic focused. Uh, Scotland is a good global citizen is a very fundamental part of that debate. Many people are talking about it and they want Scotland to be a good global citizen, uh, regardless of which way the debate goes actually, but perhaps see that there's an opportunity uh, with Scottish independence. And so there's a few ways that we would like to, to, to influence. First of all, we realise uh, even if Scotland becomes independent, we still want to be quite targeted and focused so we can make a big impact. That's targeted geographically, but also thematically. Uh, as well, uh, to where our expertise uh, happen to be. Uh, we can show leadership in areas, so for example climate justice, uh, this idea that this is a matter of human rights and justice, that the people in the developing world are suffering because of our excesses in energy and so on. Uh, bringing that leadership and language, uh, that le leadership uh, to, to the United Nations, to the world stage, to the global stage, uh, certainly something that we can do in a very niche uh, way. Uh, the other things uh, that we can do is be creative and take risks and uh, as I was saying as a small country you're able to do that uh, a lot easier than perhaps a, a larger country uh, is able to do that. And so um, in the white paper on Scottish independence we detail how we, how we do some of that, whether that's enshrining 0.7% in legislation, whether that's consideration of do no harm or PCD, uh, whether that's embedding gender equality in everything that we do. There's various things that we can do to, to, to show leadership. Um, Scotland is committed, uh, regardless of what our constitutional future is, to be a good global citizen. Uh, simply with the powers of independence, we get the, all the levers uh, internationally to be able to do that and a voice at the top table to be able to speak in this very important cause, which I hope uh, in 98 days' time we have the opportunity to do.